will enjoy this presentation of some of the commonest chord progressions in jazz. Georgia, Georgia. Each one is a beauty in its own right and a world unto itself that presents the improviser with a harmonic frame on which to hang their own particular taste of notes and rhythms. <laughs> I will present each one in the same way, with some constructional theory and audio examples. Okay, progression one, two, five, perhaps the most ubiquitous jazz progression. Let's take the C major scale and build chords on degrees two and five. That gives you D minor seven and G seven. Let's hear that. I'll repeat these chords a few times so you can get used to the sound. Let's hear this progression now on Honeysuckle Rose, a jazz classic sung by Sarah Vaughan in B flat. Every honeybee fills with jealousy when they see you out with me. I don't blame him, goodness knows. Honeysuckle Rose. Cool. You can see the 2 5 progression repeats itself four times before finally resolving to the one chord B flat. Now let's hear this progression on another jazz classic, Satin Doll. As you may be able to see, this tune is littered with two fives. They are literally everywhere. Let's see what we have. The D minor 7 G7 is from C. The E minor 7 A7 is from D major. A minor 7 D7 from G. A flat minor 7 D flat 7 is from G flat. Okay, to finish the musical examples, let's listen to John Coltrane's Moments Notice. <laughs> Where you can see that Moments Notice has many two fives and a lot of the chord pairs have chromatic relationships rather than diatonic ones. This creates a lovely colour on which Coltrane so beautifully weaved his classic melody. Common chord progression number two. One, five minor seven, one seven, four. This is a very common sound, almost as ubiquitous as the 2 5 or 2 5 1. It can be thought of as a modulation to the 4 chord. In C, the fourth degree of the scale, the subdominant, is F. If we look at the scale of F and we see the 2 5, we can see that this is where these chords actually come from. Let's have a listen to a classic example of this progression the nearness of you. It's not the pale moon that excites me, that thrills and delights me. That recording is in C sharp major. Here are the chords in C major. If we label the chords with Roman numerals, it can be very useful as it can aid transposition a lot. Another example of this chord movement is in Errol Garner's classic Misty, sung here again by Ella Fitzgerald. Look at me, I'm as helpless as a kitten up a tree and I feel like I'm clinging to a cloud after the chord progression reaches the four chord in this case E flat it goes to E flat minor and that's uh, a common place for it to go it can go to other places but that's perhaps for another video okay another example of this progression 
is in the classic Cherokee here, Burelli la Graine. <laughs> Moving on to progression number three, the one, six, two, five, also known as the turnaround. This can be quite easily constructed as you see on the scale of C major, chords one, six, two, and five. Here's a great example, I Can't Get Started, performed by Lester Young. <laughs> Here's another great example, John Coltrane playing Tad Dameron's Good Bait. You may have noted on the second repetition of the progression that instead of using the B-flat chord again, the chord was D minor, a very common substitution for the root chord, creating two pairs of two fives. Okay. One last example, Django Reinhardt playing Swing 42. Great stuff. Okay, progression four. One to four seven. This is a bluesy sound, adding the flat three into the mix. Let's hear a great song, Willow Weep For Me, sung by Sarah Vaughan, with his exact chords here at the beginning, in B flat. Willow weep for me, Willow weep for me, bend your branches green along the street. Well, this is quite an identifiable progression because it's so bluesy, the one to the four, seven adding the flat three of the key really a blue sound another famous tune that uses these two chords at the beginning is there is no greater love here is sonny stip playing it and let's have a look to see where the progression goes after those first two chords <laughs> After the first two chords of B flat and E flat seven, the progression continues around the cycle. The next chord can be A flat seven or D seven, the tritone substitute, both sound good. Okay, the last example of this one to four progression is in a blues, and that's probably where it's heard the most. Let's listen to this progression on the classic Blue Monk by Thelonious Monk. Okay, this last progression that we're going to see in this first part is called 1 to chord 2-7. So in the key of C, this is C to D7. So F sharp is introduced into the mix, an uplifting feeling. This chord, the 2-7, is actually a secondary dominant. So it's the dominant of the 5 chord. In C, that's D7 is the dominant of G7, which is the dominant of C. Secondary dominant. Okay, enough theory. How does it actually sound and how does it make you feel? Let's listen to it in action. Mood Indigo, sung by Ella Fitzgerald. Another classic by Duke Ellington. You ain't been blue no, no, no. Well, as you see, that's in B-flat. The second chord is C7 that resolves to F7 and has lovely colouring there, a sharp 5 sound, giving a mysterious colour to the piece. Okay, a very famous example, Girl from Ipanema. Let's listen to that. Tall and thin and young and lovely, the girl from Ipanema goes walking and when she passes each one she passes. Okay, so that's in D flat major. The second chord is E flat seven, and then it goes to E flat minor seven, A flat seven, and then resolves back to the tonic. Here is the chord progression in C. And 
and this identical progression is heard on Duke Ellington's classic Take the A Train. The melody note on the second chord D is G sharp and that gives that moment in the song such a strong, bright, uplifting sound. What a great sound that is. Still sounds killing after all those years. Such energy. Great gratitude to Duke Ellington for so much music. Well, that concludes the first part of this two-part series on the ten commonest chord movements. I cannot recommend highly enough to practice these chords on the piano and become familiar with them to the point that you can recognize them when you hear them. Then you will be free to use them. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe. Ciao!